Hello and welcome. I am, if you enjoy my videos, please leave a like or subscribe for more. And I'll see you next time. Or not really next time. Let's go on to Everland. A minor faction, but an important city. Now, the official name is the Ground County of Everland, and it is a major and founding imperial province that lies directly to the southeast of the Empire of Man. As the province of Ostermark, Arverland has an economy based mostly on agriculture and the raising of cattle and livestock. Unlike most states in the Empire, Arverland contains large stretches of unbroken plains. And while this land is not as fertile as those in Ostermark, it proved valuable and grazing grounds for the infamous Arverland cattle herds. Everland has also the honor of defending the site of Blackfire Pass, which leads across the World Edge Mountains from the Darklands. This is the clearest pass for thousands of miles and as such is a popular route for marauding orcs and goblins. As a result of years of defending it, the Everlanders are, are held in high esteem in the art of siege defenses. For the land, they, they lack the great force that covers much of the rest of the empire. Everland is a series of sundrich rolling plains, running roughly northwest to, northwest to southeast between the rivers of the Upper Reich, the Aver, and the Blue Reach. To the west lies Wissenland and Nald, while the plains rise in the east to meet the Black Mountains and the World Edge Mountains. Within the mountains are the kingdoms of the dwarves, which stand between Everland and the border princes. Ireland is a fertile country. Its plains watered by the annual floods of the great rivers that bore it. In some years, the rivers the rivers water crests far higher than usual, flooding the cities and towns along the banks. Everlanders see this as a price to pay for having such abundant crops. In recent years, the electoral counts of Ireland have begun discussion with the dwarves of Karak Angsar in the Black Mountains to construct a series of dikes and leagues along the north bank of the Upper Reich to control its water flood and to control its waters in flood season. Both Visseland and the Engineers Guild of Nol have protested this. The former because they feel their lands will suffer more, while the Engineers Guild claims such work is theirs by right and should go to human workers regardless. Away from the rivers, the plains rise gently to the geographical center of the province, where the old dwarf road and the Agenbetin road meets the town of Heidek. The interior of Averland is given over to small villages of tenants that dot the vast fiefs of the rural nobility. In the west and several portions of the province, nobles devote themselves mostly to raising the famous Averland longhorn cattle leading their herds each year to the stockyards of Averheim and Loggenberg for slaughter and export. While some barons, particularly near Knoll, have adopted sophisticated heirs and consider themselves above actually guiding a herd to the market, more conservative and traditional noble families still consider it a point of honor to personally lead their cattle, showing them off before their rivals. Residents of the two towns know to stay out of the local tavern when the cattle lords are in town, as their retainers like nothing better than a good brawl. In the south central and eastern portions of the country, cattle raising partially give way to viniculture and winemaking. As a country <clears throat> as a country there is more suited to the growing of quality grapes than in most parts of the western Averland. Grapes are either pressed and the wine made on the estates, or the grapes are transported to nearby towns where bro brokers will sell them to local winemakers. Famous and infamous Averland wines include the <laughs> Greenstadter White, which fetches high prices in Marienburg, where it is fashion, and Loggenberg Ruby Wine, which is produced quickly and cheaply and is popular with discerning beggars from North to Garaborg. The Far East is home to traders in gems, minerals, and furs. Many humans mine the foothills of the Black Mountains and the World Edge Mountains, 
giving a portion of that <laughs> of the takes to the local lords in return for the rights to work the mine. If you venture too far into the mountains in search of mineral wealth, however, for eventually they will trespass to the claims of the dwarfs, who have no hesitation about hauling a claim jumper before a human court and demanding restitution. The electoral counts of <laughs> Averland are anxious to keep the dwarfs happy, and they have secretly instructed their local vassals to help find for the to help find for the dwarves whenever possible. The first commonly brought down to the mountains are beavers, otters, and the rare blue mink, named for the bluish sheen to its fur, of course. Goldie first fetch high prices in the market of the big cities, and trappers have to be wary of those who would steal their hard work. Games. Now this is about the land, but about the inhabitants of this land. Now Averlanders claim their ancestors arrived in their province during the Great Migration around minus 1000 IC. Masters of horse and chariot warfare, the brigands drove out or conquered the existing tribes and made themselves lord of all they surveyed. From their great camps in the fort at the future site of Avernheim, the kings of the Brigunds made war against the humans of the Umberogen, Asborns, and Merogen tribes and the invading bands of orcs and goblins. They, de they developed good relations with the dwarves and offered to provide the cavalry for their armies. The Brigundians developed their reputation as fierce warriors who liked to strike fast and hard and they had the respect of even their bitterest rivals. Indeed, their leader Sigurd was given the honor of accompanying Sigmar himself in the final charge at the Battle of Blackfire Pass. While time and the movement of the people have brought new bodies to Avalon, the Brigunian traditions are still strong, though no longer raiding their neighbors nor riding chariots into battles. Avalanders are steady troops who keep their cool and do not break easily. Their nobles fight in, cav in a cavalry formation, wielding lances and sword, while the foot militia of pikemen and crossbowmen provide support. Now, the people of Everland are curious folk. Folk whisper the proud bloodline of the Brigunians has somewhat cradled with time, inbreeding and the looming influence of the Black Mountains. Already considered a little moon touch by most of the Empire, the extension of the Electoral Count <laughs> Mad Marius Laidorf caused much amusement at the Everlanders' expense. At their best, Everlanders are open, passionate, and honest about just what they are thinking. If a funeral happens to strike them as funny, well, they'll laugh. If someone upsets them, they'll let you know. Known to be generous, especially when entertaining. Avalanders prize those skilled at the art of telling tall stories, something wandering entertainers are very glad of. Doors are always are also very welcome in Avaland, as their plain talking ways are much admired. At their worst, Avalanders are contradictory, flighty, and changeable. Astrology and other such superstitions are very popular in Avaland. Merchants will often ditch a deal made in an unfavorable hour or on an unlucky day. Marius Leitorf, known for his dark depression and strange rages, was considered typical of the Averland temperament. Even troll slayers have been heard to say that Averlanders are a bit odd in the head. Their changeable nature has resulted in many jokes about regiments of Averlanders retreating in the face of fear, something that irritates them to no end. They resent any implication that their martial prowess is any less than that of any other state. Avalanders are also known for their intolerance of lawyers and contracts, as they imply a man can might change his mind. Those dealing with Avalanders are constantly irritated with their insistence that everything be done on honor, particularly given their unreliable reputation. Some whisper this whim of iron is in fact a cunning bargain tool of the Avalanche merchants. Now, Avalanders have a strange, almost sing-song element to their speech. They tend to soften harsh words and elongate vowels. Many artists and young nobles with pretensions to poetry imitate an Avalander accent in a belief that all great geniuses are touched by madness. Except the Electoral Count, and we'll get to this right now. 
Currently, there is no rule, clear ruler in Everland, and it hasn't been, from my knowledge, until the end of times. Their last legitimate electoral count was Marius Laidorf, ironically, who was killed in 2520 IC, and no clear, man, clear claimant to the title has emerged. The other provinces pointed out that this is a typical of Averlanders, where all provinces would have a good, honest, short, sharp war, the Averlanders are insisting on a draw game of politics, one upmanships, and devious maneuvering. The Laidorfs are a relative newcomers to the reins of power, having ousted the ruling Alpturm family and seized power in a brilliant, if unconventional, coup. This graph for power seems as if it will be short lived, however, as the deceased electoral count siblings and relatives. Fight one another. The Alptroms are quietly building money and influence once more. Now, to complicate matters, the favors of the nobility seem to change with each fa phase of the moon. Sometimes they seem to prefer one claimant, at other times, a different one. No one pretender to the title can count on support against their rivals, a situation some, some scholars believe to be to the benefit of the wealthy nobility of Avalon. For whilst the electoral business is carried out, in a dead man's name, no new taxes, levies, or trials can take place. Indeed, many merchants have cause to celebrate this temporary reprieve from electoral, electoral demand, and there are no hurry to see normality restored. Now, again, thank you for watching, and I, if you want to see more, just click that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you again for watching.